Hi everybody, I'm Rook. Welcome to the table. Got a couple matches for you today here. Played a Twisted Nightmare and technically Match of Millennium sealed tournament uh, that first weekend that the Structure Decks came out. This was over in Keebler's Corner. I can link that Discord in the description below. He does try and hold some sort of like a weekly every Sunday. And this one was a sealed tournament. We picked either a deck of Match of the Millennium or Twisted Nightmare, and we constructed a deck out of just those cards. So like you're opening a deck from scratch and you're making a deck out of it. Um, and so I'm playing some tournaments matches here. This is single elimination. I'm playing Keebler to start. I just want to share these with you. So this was before the skills came out. So those last gambles, those are actually Twisted uh, Personality. So I'll probably try and put a little Merrick icon over those. Those are both Twisted Personality. So we are all playing Twisted Nightmares here because no one wanted to build a deck out of Match the Millennium. Um, so that's why it's labeled Twisted Nightmares Sealed Tournament. But um, as you can see, I'm starting with the Boganian here. One back row, Keebler set, two back row, and one card. Now, actually, the thing about the replay with Dwarven Book is we can actually see the attack and defense there. So I know that would beat over that, but he has Nightmare Wheel on my Boganian, so that's going to burn me for 15. So we're both running Twisted Personality, which means that 500 is going to give both of us a counter. Remember, two counters, you can discard a card from your opponent's hand. Three counters, you can remove something face up on the field. So I have Githgar Gilgarth, Earthbound Spirit, and Prideful Roar. Gil Gilgarth is the good 1800 attack normal monster. Earthbound Spirit is the one with the high defense, 2000 defense. Prideful Roar, Roar is the good damage step trap. And the forceful checkpoint right there, which will negate an attack if there's a monster in Keebler's hand. But I got hit by the Nightmare Wheel, and I can't attack now. However, it's going to be my standby phase. So Boganian's effect is... On the standby phase, inflict 600 damage to your opponent. So you'll see 600 damage come from Keebler here, and it actually gives us both a second counter, so that's the bad thing about playing with Twisted Personality against Twisted Personality, is you both get the same counters. But you saw in Keebler's last turn, he set another back row, so he's got a heavy back row here. If I get one more counter, I can remove that Nightmare Wheel, but I'm actually going to drop two, and I'm going to ditch the last card that's in his hand. I find that more valuable in this situation just because I have other monsters that I can get out and attack. So that was the Lava Golem. So yeah, I'm glad I did that because I was going to get two monsters out here. Then he was going to be able to tribute for Lava Golem. So here's the Gilgarth, 1800 attack. Not really much can uh, can withstand that. I'm going to set uh, I'm going to set my Prideful Roar and battle phase. I'm going to swing into this monster. Let's see if he has a back row to stop me. There's a forceful checkpoint, and I do have Earthbound Spirit in my hand, so this will negate the attack, and he's going to drop Earthbound Spirit into my grave. Ooh, and he activates Coffin Cellar. Really, really good stuff from him, so Coffin Cellar is every time a monster goes to my graveyard, inflict 300 damage to your opponent. So that works with Forceful Checkpoint. Forceful Checkpoint will drop Earthbound Spirit into my grave, and then Coffin Cellar combos there a nice little combo and of course the 300 life points loss is counters for him and me so now he has three counters and he will be able to just completely remove gilgarth next turn if he so chooses um, i'm going to pass turn here and it's keebler's draw standby phase i'm going to take 500 more life points from the nightmare wheel that really adds up if you let it out keep it out for too long yeah you can see i actually forgot that nightmare wheel was there keebler had to remind me gently to take the 500 so that drops me down to 27 and we keep getting counters so I, if twisted personality could get more than three counters this would be so stupid but uh, that's a Drilago from Keebler. Drilago's effect is if I have only 1,600 attack or more monsters on the field, he can attack directly. But I do have Boganian, so that won't happen. Keebler is going to drop two counters to get rid of my Forceful Checkpoint, which uh, it's okay. I can drop Forceful Checkpoint because he doesn't have anything in his hand, so it wasn't really going to work. But Battle Phase, Drilago is going to run into this Boganian, which is good for me in a sense because it's going to remove Nightmare Wheel, but I'm losing a monster. So let's see if I have some for that. I'm going to activate Prideful Roar. Prideful Roar is the damage step where you pay the life point uh, difference in attack, and then you gain 300 attack over it. So essentially, Drilago is going to die here, and Keeler is going to lose 300 life points. That's pretty much what Prideful Roar does. It can be expensive. You can pay up to 1,000 life points. You can pay a lot of life points if you really want to, but I'm only getting away with paying 300 there. So now we saw 300 life points I paid. That's a counter, right? And then the 300 life points he lost, that's a counter. So you, you can see how we get the counters really, really easily with Twisted Personality. So now we're both sitting at three, which is just crazy. But luckily, it's not Keebler's main phase anymore, so we can't capitalize on that just yet. And the Twisted Personality counters is once per turn. If it was multiple times per turn, that would be stupid too. But uh, Keebler has no choice here. He's going to have to end his battle phase. Just double checking that I did pay. I did pay the 300 on Prideful Roar there. And it is my turn. So, oh, Drew the Lava Golem. Not going to help me here right yet. 
since Keebler only has one monster set. But my main phase, I'm probably going to want to go ahead and remove all three counters to remove that Nightmare Wheel so I can start swinging with Boganian and Gilgarth. Really, really, really scary combo here. But it is my standby phase. Got to make sure Keebler loses the 600 life points that Boganian's effect has. Um, and, you know, of course, we don't get any more counters. We were both capped at three. But I remove all three to get rid of Nightmare Wheel. So now Boganian and Gilgarth can attack. This is going to be pretty devastating for Keebler. And, oh, there's my Dark Eruption, which allows me to get a monster, Dark Monster, 1500 or less attack in my graveyard, add it to my hand. And I do not... Oh, I was targeting my Earthbound Spirit, but it's Earth. Why did I think it was dark? I thought it was dark. So now he knows I have Dark Eruption in the back row. But Gilgar's going to hit this defense monster. Coffin Cellar will not help him here. Uh, Mask of Darkness is going to get a trap back. There's the Nightmare Will. Yeah, that makes sense. He's going to get Nightmare Will back, but I should be able to get 1300 for free here with Boganian. And that's going to go through, and the counters are coming. <clears throat> so I'm getting counters back, but he can't get any more counters, so that's kind of good for me. Keebler's turn, going into the main phase with three counters, so he's going to be able to remove all three counters to destroy something. <clears throat> Sets a back row, that is the Nightmare Wheel right there. Removing all the counters for Gilgarth, yep, makes sense. I might be able to win by just draining him out with Boganian's 600 uh, life point hits on standby. Yep, yeah, pop my Gilgarth there. Oh yeah, Coffin Cellar. I'm actually going to take 300 from that pop because my monster is going to the graveyard. Coffin Cellar makes me lose 300 and that actually gives us some counters so now I have two counters so if I wanted to I could drop that card from Keebler's hand just to make sure he has no other options I can keep burning with Boganian well actually Boganian is gonna get me to three counters because Keebler's gonna be losing 600 life points here and uh, I could choose to pop Coffin Cellar I can't use it to pop back row it's got to be a face-up card and I don't see the value in popping Coffin Cellar to be honest it, it can hang out there that's fine take up a whole slot <clears throat> but Boganian's gonna hit him for 600 on the standby phase and I'm going to be able to summon Drilago here and probably push for game. Now he's got the Nightmare Wheel, which is going to stop either Boganian or Drilago. To be safe, I am dropping two counters to drop the last card from his hand, and now Nightmare Wheel can only target Boganian or Drilago. So one of these is going to get Nightmare Wheeled, but that's okay because the other one is going to swing for game. And Keebler missed defeat. I didn't make a side deck for this. This, Like I said, this is the sealed tournament where it's like they just handed you a box of Twisted Nightmare. You put together a 20-card deck and then you just play it out. So obviously none of these decks are optimal. As you can see, like we're really using only one of each card because there really is only one of each card in the starter deck. But it's pretty fun. If you guys haven't played a sealed tournament before, I definitely recommend you do so. This sealed tournament had, it, it wasn't that many people, but it was fun and it was a good way to get your feet wet with the deck for sure. I wish that people had chosen Match the Millennium. Uh, everybody pretty much chose Twisted Nightmares when it came to a sealed format just because they had just initially great cards like you think Lava Golem, Gilgarth, Prideful Roar, Zoma, all those others. But uh, Keebler is playing around with his side here. We're going to see what game two has. All right, we're back. So Dueling Book lost the last two games of that replay. That's the first time I, w I use replay instead of actually recording the match as it goes. Dueling Book just, it stopped its siding against Keebler. So you guys saw that first game against Keebler that I squeaked out with a win, um, but you're not going to see the next two games. Sorry about that. But I did win against Keebler. I moved on. This is single elimination here, and I'm playing Tetra next. So... Tetra won his match as well and like I said once again going into the sealed format I'm using the same deck that you saw in that game against Keebler and kind of the constructed Twisted Nightmare deck that I put together against Tetra who also constructed a Twisted Nightmare deck we are both using Twisted Personality not Last Gamble like I said, this was before the skills came out, so we are using Last Gamble as a placeholder. But Tetra's going to go first. He's set in two back row. And a monster. He's passed the turn to me. So I have Dark Eruption, Twister, Gilgarth, Zoma, and Prideful Roar. Good, good traps. Zoma set. Prideful Roar set. Prideful Roar won't help me just yet. Oh, I got Twister set too, which is a quick spell that'll work really nicely. And there's Gilgarth. Really, really strong monster out in the very beginning. I can also flip Zoma at a later time as another monster there. But going into the battle phase, Gilgarth, 1800 attack. Gonna swing into that monster, but we got Forceful Checkpoint, which is bad for Tetra because I have a Dark Eruption. So Forceful Checkpoint requires you have a monster in your hand to negate the attack. So that attack will not be negated. And as we can see, that monster has 1500 defense. So that is going to the grave, and that was the Dark Geroid. And that card is summoning you target one face-up monster on the field, loses 800 attack. So Tetra went first, so he couldn't really make anything lose attack by summoning Dark Geroid. But he's got the Rope of Life! Rope of Life. When a monster is destroyed by balance into the graveyard, discard your entire hand. 
and then target one of those monsters with special summon it, summon it, and it gets 800 attack. So that's a 2,000 attack Dark Geroid. He had Help Homer in his hand, so he was trying to get a tribute off, but unfortunately he had to discard to bring it back. And also, <clears throat> Dark Geroid's effect, because it was summoned in some capacity, I lose 800 attack as well. So Dark Geroid gained 800 attack to put him at 2,000, and Gilgarth is going to lose 800 attack to put him at 1,000. This is going to be a battle damage difference of 1,000 here as Tetra swings into me. I do have a board advantage as uh, Tetra only has two cards, one on the field, one in hand. <clears throat> I'm a Pride for Roar that. So I'm actually paying 1,000, which is pretty hefty for Pride for Roar. But I'm going to pay 1,000 to match that attack, and then it's going to be plus 300 over. That's Pride for Roar's effect. <clears throat> so that is going to the grave. And Tetra losing his only monster, taking 300 life point damage. Also, because we both took life points there, uh, we are both getting two counters because we are both using Twisted Personality. So now it's the start of my turn. I have two counters here, a 1,000 attack, super strong Gilgarth, and I think I'm going to go ahead and I just drew, drew the Drilago. That's great, 1,600 attack monster I can put on the field. That'll be good. But my main phase one, I'm going to go ahead and summon Drilago first, and then I'm going to remove both of my counters to drop that last card from Tetra's hand. That was a gap to define soldier, which required a tribute. So now Tetra is left defenseless, and I'm going to hit him with a thousand from Gilgarth, and I'm gonna hit him with 1600 from Drilago. That's two more counters, since he's losing life points twice. As you can see, Tetra's capped at three counters, so he'll be able to pop something face up on my side of the field now, but he's really relying on the top decks. And do keep in mind, I do have a Twister and a Zoma. I actually probably could have pushed for game by blowing Zoma, but the deck was kind of new, and I didn't uh, think about Zoma at the time. But I'm popping Zoma, Zoma now, so that is a 500 defense, 1800 attack monster. <clears throat> Popped it on the end phase there so I can spin it into attack mode here. That's an 1800 attack monster. And its effect is if it gets beat over by something, they take the damage equal to that monster's attack. But there is no monster on the field right now. I'm going to try and swing for game with Zoma. And Nightmare Wheel is going to lock Zoma in place. Gilgarth, only 1000 attack. So that's actually just dropping Tetra all the way down to 100. Staying alive by the skin of his teeth. It does kind of feel like he's running last gamble now. But um, <clears throat> there's counters everywhere for Twisted Personality. I'm sitting at three. And uh, Tetra setting that back row. Oh, I'm taking 500 from the Nightmare Wheel on Zoma. That's going to give Tetra another counter. And passing to me. Decided not to use the counters yet. Trying to get to three. Main phase one for me. I'm going to remove all three of my counters to get rid of Nightmare Wheel. So now Zoma has free reign to attack. I did draw the Supply Squad as well, which is when a monster... What is that? <clears throat> monster controls destroyed by battle or card effect or draw a card. So might as well activate that. Battle phase. I'm going to swing for game with Gilgarth 1000, and this back row better save him. And it is the Metal Reflect Slime. That is the 3000 attack defense that comes out in defense mode. But, like we saw in the beginning of the game, I did have that Twister set. So I should be able to pop Twister here, pay 500 life points, because Metal Reflect Slime, similar to Zoma, it still is technically a trap. So Twister can pop it, because it's a face up. And that's going to win me the first game. Going into the siding phase, like I said, I didn't side anything in this deck. Looks like Tetra didn't either. Going into game two. And Tetra's deciding to go second. <clears throat> Makes sense. I'm starting with Dark Ruler, Hadass, Dark Eruption, Twister, and Bizer Shock. Not a really good hand. Two monsters and both require tributes. Dark Eruption is not going to help me because I'm going to be 1,500 attack monsters or less in the graveyard right now. And Twister, I mean, Twister is always kind of versatile. Good to have in an opening hand, but I have no monster presence. So I'm going to set that Twister. I activate Twisted Personality just to get it rolling. And now Tetra's turn. Tetra's got Whiptail Crow right off the bat. 1650 normal monster. That's pretty strong. <clears throat> Talking about the sealed format. So 1650 coming right to my face. I don't have any way to stop that. That's going to hurt. And we're getting counters. We both have one counter on Twisted Personality now that I took life point damage. I top deck the Drilago, which is actually going to work. <clears throat> the effect's going to work because... Tetra only has face-up monsters with 1,600 or more attack, so Drilago will be able to attack directly here. Go ahead and set my Dark Eruption as a bluff so I have more kind of meat in the back row. Battle phase, I'm going to try and swing on him for 16. And he's got Forceful Checkpoint, and I have two monsters in my hand, so that's going to happen. Tetra deciding which card to discard from my hand. Yeah, we're going to get a Dark Ruler Hades. That is definitely the more threatening one of the two. And that attack's going to be negated. So leaving me wide open, Drilago to be destroyed by Whiptail Crow here with an attack difference of 50 next turn. I'm going to go ahead and end my turn at this point, passing it back to Tetra. End phase. Tetra's going to activate Zoma the Spirit. That's the right time to, at, to activate it, definitely on the end phase, because now you see that with Zoma it starts in defense. 
and it's only 500 defense. So the best time to activate is at the end phase. So then now it's your turn, it's your main phase, and now you can spin it into attack. That's what you're really looking for. So he's going to spin Zoma into attack, most likely 1800 with Whiptail Crow 1650. That's going to beat over Drilago. And oh, he has a Drilago of his own, so he'll actually be able to attack directly. <laughs> yeah, he's attacking it directly with Drilago first. And, you know, I have Twister and Dark Eruption set, so I have absolutely no way to stop this. This is going to completely overwhelm me. I will pay the 500 to get rid of Zoma, because Zoma is a trap still. Twister is actually pretty viable if people are running Metal Reflect Slime and Zoma. And I know people are going to run Zoma all over the place. So Twister working for me. Drop me down to 250, and I have nothing to stop that. That's going to lose me 50 more life points. All my monsters are gone. I'm at 200 life points, but I have three counters at this point. We both have three counters at this point with all the life point damage that I just took. I think I took it on three separate occasions there. So I did just top deck Offerings to the Doom, which will get rid of one of those monsters right away, but I won't be able to draw the next turn. And Visor Shock is a tribute monster. It's a, it's a five star, so I can't summon that yet. But I'm going to remove all of my counters to get rid of Drilago. And then I think what I really... I think I got Offerings to the Doom, the Whiptail Crow. I'm going to set... The offerings to the doomed, <clears throat> but yeah, if I don't uh, if I don't play it, then he's gonna he's gonna beat me here. <laughs> Tetra says, "Imagine an effect with four counters." I'm telling you, yeah, like Tetra's been capped at three with all of that battle damage back and forth. Like if there was more, <laughs> deal 500 life points to your opponent with four counters. Yeah, that'd be stupid. You don't think you're gonna get to three that fast, but you do, and you stay there. But it's gonna be Tetra's turn here, so I have the offerings to the doom set which I'm going to have to use on that Whip Hill Crow because the other card is Dark Eruption. He's got a Gilgarth. Oh, so he has two monsters now. I'm not going to be able to survive this. He's going into the battle phase. Going to start. Start his attack with Whip Tail Crow. I have to offer him to doom that. Skip my next draw phase, but he's got the game with Gilgarth. <laughs> so that was game two. One and one now. Sighting in progress. Not really. Going into game three. I'm definitely electing to go second here. I'm still not entirely sure what's best with um, Twisted Personality first or second. I think it really depends on what you have in your deck here, but obviously, you know, this is the sealed format, so the decks aren't really meta, of course. So I'm just going to go second. But uh, interesting opening hand. Coffin Cellar, Gilgarth, Prideful Roar, and Metal Reflect Slime. Gilgarth is a really good monster in this deck, 1800, but Tetra's going to go first, and he has a Gilgarth of his own. So that's they're going to butt heads there, but I could use Prideful Roar to give myself an advantage. I just drew the Dark Eruption, which isn't going to help me really right now. But there I go. Set Metal Reflect Slime, set Prideful Roar, set Coffin Cellar. And I'm going to bring out Gilgarth, most likely. I could probably activate Coffin Cellar as soon as my turn is over, just so we can start seeing life point damage when he loses monsters to the grave. I'm actually going to do a hard pass. I'm not going to summon Gilgarth yet. Why? Because I have the Metal Reflect Slime. Metal Reflect Slime will save me from any attack Gilgarth will attack me with. And I don't want to lose my only monster just yet. You know, I might not draw another one. But I did activate Co uh, Coffin Cellar on his draw phase just so that's up and running. And Tetra activates a Lord of Darkness, which is a good card here. It lets you draw two and then banish a Dark Monster. He banished Lancer, which was the Piercer, I believe. Tetra sets one back row. And there's Drilago, so he does have quite the monster presence here. Going to the battle phase, and I'm going to, yeah, let's not waste any time. I got Metal Reflect Slime, so that's 3,000 defense. Shouldn't be able to beat over that, and of course it's not 1,600 or more attacks, so Drilago can't attack directly. And yeah, Tetra has no answer to that, so he's going to pass it to me. I just drew a Bizer Shock, so now I feel comfortable getting monsters out, and I have a second one here. There's Gilgarth, 1,800 attack. I can comfortably beat over Drilago, so that's a plus for me. Battle phase, let's see if I can get this to happen, depending on the back row Tetra has, which of course in Twisted Nightmares deck we're seeing Nightmare Wheel and Forceful Checkpoint, Prideful Roar. You know, there's a lot of things that could stop this. Yeah, he's going to activate Nightmare Wheel there. One of the three. One of the, one of the many that can stop that attack. Nightmare Wheel and Gilgarth locking him, and I'm going to burn for 500 each of uh, my standby phases, or his standby phases. So, Tetra draws. I lose 500 life points from Nightmare Wheel, and that's the first life point damage of the game, so we're both getting counters now. Now Tetra can either crash Gilgarth's, which is would be bad for him because he'd lose Nightmare Wheel. You don't want to do that. Um, but he really can't do anything else because of Metal Reflect Slime. So Metal, Metal Reflect Slime is pretty, pretty solid as long as you don't have somebody playing Twister against you or Windstorm of Takwa. But obviously, in the sealed, this is sealed, so there's no Windstorm here. So you, you're not in trouble with that. Tetra's going to set a monster and pass his turn to me. And I drew the Nudoria, 
which is uh, basically that's the Yomi ship one. You can target a monster on the field and destroy that target when it's destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard. So maybe not as good as Yomi Chef because it got to be destroyed by battle. But main phase one, I do have the Bizer Shock, and he did just set a monster. Bizer Shock returns all sets to the opponent's hands. And my set was, I think that's the uh, Dark Eruption. No, it's the Prideful Roar. No, Dark Eruption's in my hand. The Prideful Roar I can just reset. So I did Tribute Gilgarth for Bizer Shock in attack mode, 800 attack, and that's going to put Tetra's monster back to hand. So Bizer Shock is actually in some hot water because that's not a very strong monster, but it does kind of slow him down and uh, ruin his momentum as it puts the set back into his hand. And I'm going to be able to reset Prideful Roar. So if he comes at me next turn with Gilgarth or Drilago into Bizer Shock, I could Prideful Roar and I could pay that life point difference if I really wanted to just make sure that it goes off the field. And it would be two counters because you'd see one from me losing life points to match the attack and two for him losing life points because of the 300 plus on Prideful Roar. But I'm setting Prideful Roar again ending my turn. Tetra now, four cards in hand, two monsters. Kinda, it's pretty scary. I mean, Coffin Cellar hasn't really done anything for me yet. I, really the only thing I have going for me is Metal Reflect Slime, which he could easily just quick play or quick spell Twister it. I mean, I think that that's his only option besides, oh, besides getting the counters. You get three counters on Twisted Personality and you can pop it, but really slow on the life points so far this game. There's that Monster Tetra return to hand. Gonna set that again and go right into the battle phase. No back row this turn. So we have Gilgarth and Drilago. Gilgarth going to be into Bizer Shock. That would be uh, life points of a thousand to me, and Bizer Shock would leave. But I'm going to pride for Roar. I'm going to pay that 1,000 life points. There's a counter. Beats over Gilgarth by 300 per Prideful Roar's effect, which is another counter. So now we both have three counters, and Tetra lost 300 life points there. So I am at a life points deficit for sure, 2,500. But now I'm coming into my turn with three counters. Obviously, so is Tetra, but the goal is that I can kind of turn the board around on him. Um, because obviously, he, you know, he would use those three counters to destroy Metal Reflect Slime, but the goal for me is to set up my field so that I don't need it anymore. If I can get rid of his monsters and have a monster presence of my own, then I won't really need Metal Reflect and Stun's purpose. Oh yeah, and uh, minus 300 for Coffin Cellar, which would have put us at another counter, but we already capped at three. So it's going to be my turn here. Ooh, Nudoria or Boganian? Which one do I want to pick? And I don't think I can use Dark Corruption here, but I'm going to remove all three counters to get rid of Drilago. And Coffin Cellar is actually going to hit him for 300 again, which is going to get a counter back on me. That's, that's what's so stupid about this skill. So I just blew all three counters to remove a monster, but Coffin Cellar is going to give, hit him with life point damage, which gives me another counter. This is why I'm glad that you can only do it once per turn. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> Coffin Cellar is something people forget about. Like, I don't think we're going to see Coffin Cellar in the meta. I tried running it right, like, immediately. I put one in um, when I was making Twisted Personality deck, <clears throat> but it's slow, and it takes up a whole spot. And speed Duel? That's not... No, I don't think it's worth it. You only get three slots, man. Yeah, Bizer Shock and Defense, because that boy is not... He's not going to fight anything. Not without Prideful Roar. And uh, I can get a monster out here. Do I want Nudoria or Boganian? I'm going to set the Nudoria. Try to maintain that board control. See if he'll swing something into it. And then I can start popping his monsters. And Mel Reflect Slime stays. But he does have three counters here. Going into his turn. Alright, Tetra, removing all three counters to pop the Metal Reflect Slime. Yep, that's what was expected. Oh, and he had Nudoria as well. He's going to tribute that. Yes, Coffin Cellar activates and he, and he remembered, so there's more counters. I'm already at two counters again, but he did tribute Nudoria for the Dark Ruler Hot Desk. <clears throat> this is the one where it negates the effects of monsters destroyed by battle with fiend-type monsters you control. Dark Ruler Hot Desk is a fiend-type monster, so Nudoria does not actually happen. Yeah. That would have been pretty sweet if he tributed for something and Doria just said, no, you know what, I'm going to take you with me. But Dark Ruler Hadas was the right monster there. And now it's going into my turn. So I do have Boganian. I'm going to Dark Eruption get my Nudoria back because now I finally have a, a monster, a dark monster in the grave there with 1,500 or less attack. There's only 1,200 attack Nudoria. But I'm not going to get it out just yet because Dark Ruler Hades will not let me use its effect. So it's pretty much just a 1,200 attack normal monster right now, which is bad. Um, but I'm going to set Forceful Checkpoint, which is going to, uh, well, he's got a pretty big hand, so I think it might work. And I'm going to normal summon the Boganian just because I do want to start getting the standby phase damage. And I can negate his next attack with uh, Forceful Checkpoint. But uh, I'm kind of playing myself into a corner here at this point. 
figure out how I'm going to turn this around because Dark Ruler had S is such a threat. I have to top deck a like a Dark Ruler myself or, or some Gap or, or some tribute monster that's going to help me. <clears throat> but I do have two counters on my Twisted Personality. Don't know if I want to blow him to discard though. He does have four cards in his hand. I'm not sure if I'm gonna, I could pick a bad one for sure. And I might want to wait till three so that I can get rid of Dark Ruler Hades because I don't know how I'm going to do it just yet. Tetra's thinking here. It's his main phase. Tetra are going to normal summon Whiptail Crow. Pretty strong going into battle phase here. They're both going to be over Boganian, and I was kind of banking on him not having a second monster uh, because Forceful Checkpoint will only potentially negate one attack. All right, Dark Ruler Hot Death into Boganian, and I will Forceful Checkpoint that because that's some life point damage here. I can take life point damage uh, from Whiptail Crow. It won't be as much, and it'll put me to three counters so I can get rid of Dark Ruler. But I am looking at Tetra's Hand and Lava Golem, Dark Geroid, Mask of Darkness with a card. So he had all monsters, and I'm going to get rid of Lava Golem. I don't know if that was the right play, actually, now that I think about that. Because he seems pretty adamant on beating my monsters in, as opposed to tributing them and giving me the Lava Golem. But Whiptail Crow does beat over Boganian, so that was a life point loss of uh, 350. And it gave me my third counter. So I can remove all three counters to get rid of Dark Ruler. And I drew my own Dark Ruler Hades, so that's good. So I could tribute for Dark Ruler right now. That'd be pretty good. Oh, Tetra loses 300 life points from Coffin Cellar. <clears throat> Gives me a counter again. And I will tribute the Bizer Shock for Dark Ruler Hades, um, which is going to... Oh, shoot, but he's going to get a third counter here. Yeah, I'm going to beat over the Whiptail Crow for 1,100. But that should give him a third counter. Oh, man. I did not think that one through. <laughs> Nudoria might have been a good play, but I, I couldn't afford to lose my monster presence and have Dark Ruler sitting there unable to be summoned. So I will make him burn all three counters to get rid of Dark Ruler, but then I'm just left with Coffin Cellar, which is pretty worthless at this point. Um, so I have two counters, and I'm passing my turn to Tetra, who now is sitting at three. And we know he has Mask of Darkness and uh, Dark Geroid in his hand. Yep. There's all three counters removed to get rid of... I'm assuming Dark Ruler, yeah. I don't think you're going to get rid of Coffin Cellar. So there's Dark Ruler in the Graveyard. Supply Squad. All right. Might as well activate that. You got some spots free. That's the one where if a monster you control is destroyed, you can get to draw. So Supply Squad is active, and you know he's got Dark Geroid or Mask of Darkness. He's probably just going to normal summon Dark Geroid. Oh, he's going to set the... Looks like the Mask of Darkness. Um, and he's going to pass it to me. So I just drew Gap the Divine Soldier which is a six star so i need to tribute that that's the one where the flip effects aren't activated so i'm probably going to I, either set nudoria or or normal summit but i'm going to drop the last two counters from my twisted personality to drop his monster to the grave okay so dark geroid so that lets me know that he set the mask of darkness and uh, coffin seller is going to activate on that discard to the graveyard as a monster hit his grave so he's going to lose 300 there and that's going to get both of us one counter so if I was paying attention, I should know that that set monster is the Mask of Darkness. And it looks like I was paying attention because I just normal summoned the Nudoria. And oh, I was not paying attention because I just passed my turn and I would have beat over that. Oh my god, I forgot this happened. Tetra top decks. Prometheus, King of the Shadows. This is the one where this card's normal summon. You banish one or more dark monsters from your graveyard. And if you do, it gains 400 attack for each until the end of this turn. One, two, three, four, five, six? Was it six? Six fiends. What's 400 times six? Math. Uh, 24. 3,600 attack Prometheus, King of Shadows. And I have 2,150? That's actually going to be battle damage for game. The top deck Prometheus King of Shadows for game. And I reveal that I had gapped the Divine Soldier there in my hand. So even if I beat over that Mask of Darkness, it didn't matter. So that <laughs> Prometheus King of Shadows, who would have thought? I don't think we're... Are we really going to see that? Are we really going to see... I don't know. I don't think we'll ever see another Prometheus that big. That was fun, though. So Tetra wins that... Tetra wins that duel, which uh, this was single elimination, so that knocked me out of this sealed tournament. But I went, I 
I uh, went one and one, beat Keebler and then lost to Tetra. Like I said, not too many people there in that tournament. But uh, it was a good time and it got our feet wet with kind of learning the decks. Certainly learning Twisted Nightmares and all the, the good fiends that it has to offer. A lot of people also picking up on the fact that Twisted Personality is very good. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will catch you guys later with the next one. See ya.